Welcome. Hello, beautiful souls. My name is Sadhana, and welcome to my channel. Welcome to 40 Days of Restorative Yoga, 40 Inspirational Messages. And today, I would just like to pause. I would like to pause and offer this practice, offer prayers of heartfelt. Well, really, my words fail me. But I want you to know that on this day and every day I stand in solidarity with my brothers and sisters all over the world. And today, especially, I want to acknowledge that Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. And until this world and until humanity understands, truly understands that no lives matter until every single life matters, we have a long, long ways to go. And one of the ways that I have been able to work through some of the most challenging experiences for me throughout my, my whole life, this life, is through various yogic practices, breath especially. But this one, this restorative practice is a really beautiful way to work with breath because it's slow and it's quiet and it requires stillness, which is something that we need to take in order to bring our parasympathetic nervous system sorry, our sympathetic nervous system into balance. So when we are in fight or flight, it's very hard to think clearly. Everything becomes very reactionary and our trigger, we get triggered so easily. So even if it is just for a moment, one breath can make all the difference between making a heartfelt decision or one that's not and I have much more to say on this but I, I want to continue with this practice and go right through the 40 days and I have plans for other things as well too because I feel this is so needed for everyone right now especially right now and I was hoping today that we could get some wisdom from uh, the Bhagavad Gita. For those of you that aren't familiar with this piece of literature, it is a uh, an ancient Indian text. Um, it is part of a larger piece called the Mahabharata, and it is um, it's a beautiful story, and it is written um, poetically and metaphorically. And um, if you've never read a translation of this, of this book, it's, it's definitely something to put on your to-do list. Um, universal teachings based in Indian culture. And my cards are kind of all over the place. I haven't had this deck built for a while. I used it as a study deck for quite a while. Um, it's not one that I ever pull out with clients. It's kind of my own private deck and I as you know I'm very interested in Indian culture and the teachings of the sages okay so this is the story of Krishna and Arjuna um, among other things um, so let's see if we can get some wisdom from the Bhagavad Gita. I invite you to close your eyes, perhaps even lie down on your mat and just really connect to your breath. Today we're going to be talking about sitting and we're going to do a posture and really work on the seat today. But for now, just lie down or be in your seat, breathe, close your eyes and make space.
How can the Bhagavad Gita help us to gain clarity? Which particular passage will help us to understand, to help us move through, to help be in the energy of the current world situation? Why does this happen? So for those of you that pull cards and do this kind of work, you know that you can be holding a deck, looking at cards, thinking, should I take this one to this class or, or should I take this one to do readings today, would this be a good deck for these students or whatever? And then you go to the class and then the, the last card you were looking at is the one that gets drawn in that class. Well, this is the case. I was just looking at this card. I was just looking at this card. So the keyword is best of yogis and I will post this today. And I'll write some reflections on this passage today, but I'll just share with you this passage from the back of the, of the card. So this is pretty profound, actually. I, will, I won't read the Sanskrit. Um, it's from chapter six, verse 47. Of all yogis, the one who is filled with faith, his entire being given over to me is the most intimately united with me and is the best of all. The one who is filled with faith, his entire being given over to me, is the most intimately united with me. And what this speaks to is complete and utter trust in universal energy, in the divine, in, in the divine plan, in the divine order, however you perceive it. And trust can be very, very challenging at a time like this because our actions move from, not from a place of trust, they move from a place of ego because we've lost trust, we've lost faith. And so this card is a reminder, even for a moment, to be quiet and to ask for trust if it's lost and to start to find your way back into trust. So I will, I'll say more about this. I'll, I'll write about it later today and post it on the community tab and, and share with you the picture from the deck. Okay, so the seat, the yogic seat. We're gonna work on um, the fire log posture and the steps and stages into that. And you see me sitting like all like this all the time. This is the most comfortable way for me to sit. I can sit like this without a bolster for a short period of time, but with a bolster, I can sit like this for a long time because it gives space for my knees. Um, there's less pressure on my heels and my legs, and it's just a position that I've really come to enjoy. And my knees are below my hips, which is what we want to move towards in sitting in yoga. 
And I'm sure many of you have come to sit in yoga or other places. And when we sit in a cross-legged position, it's really, really not comfortable for a lot for an extended period of time. And a lot of people sit in a cross-legged position, you know, like I'm sitting on a, let me get off the cushion, right? And knees are always higher than hips. And energetically, we have the energy moving in the wrong direction. It's not, I won't say the wrong direction, a non-healing direction. We want the energy moving from the hips and flowing out because this is where we store so much emotion and trauma is in this part of the body. So we need to get the hips below the, below. So we need to get the knees below the hips. So how in the world are we gonna do that? Well, sit, sitting on books, sitting on blocks, is a start sitting on a bolster. So if you have an opportunity to, um, so even a bolster like this, much better to sit cross-legged like this with your knees level with the hips than to be sitting on the floor with your knees up, which is not comfortable at all. And eventually working the knees right down toward the floor. So the knees stay down below the hips, which is the shape we have eventually coming into some of the deeper yogic seats. This is really, really high. But for some people, sitting on a couple of blocks is exactly what is needed in order to begin to move toward this. Okay, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do today is just, I'm gonna set you up into the a more open cross-legged position and working towards the fire log position, which is called Agni Stambhasana in Sanskrit. And, and then we'll go and do a little bit of, of hip rotation and then have a Shavasana, okay? So what I encourage you to do, now you can do this um, on both sides. So in an ideal world, in a more active class, you have the front of the shin parallel to the front of the mat. And then the second leg, so this is not in my range of motion either, is stacked on top. And you can see here, there's a big gap here and there's a big gap here. So what I'm gonna to suggest to you is to open the cross-legged position. So my knees are slightly wider than my hips. My shins are close to the front of the mat but my knees are still quite high. However, this is gonna give me a lot more of, I don't wanna say a chance, but something like that, of softening into this area than being uh, further away in that previous posture I just showed you. So over time, this part of my leg will eventually easily rest up here. It, it will. <laughs> I've been there. And um, whether it's with age or lack of practice or any number of reasons, the tension, you know, changes year to year. And so this is one way that I like to sit in working towards um, a more... What, what would be the word? A more formal yogic seat. And this is quite um, quite a, a good stretch, just this in itself or the hips. So I'm going to turn to the side. I still have the chair here. I asked you to keep your chair handy for today so you can see this posture from the side. Sitting on my cushion. <clears throat> my shins are close to parallel to the front of the mat. And I'm going to support underneath my legs where this gap is because in restorative yoga, we want to support all of the pieces that are not in contact with the floor. And then, bring in a chair so that you have a place to rest. And so you may have 
one, two, many, many blocks underneath your seat. And do whatever you need to do to begin to expand and soften your cross-legged position. Ironically, cross-legged position is called Sukhasana, easy pose in Sanskrit. And for most people, it's anything but easy. And so we're just going to stay here for a few moments. And then I'm going to offer a hip opener and then we're going to come back here and then to Shavasana. So as you rest in a shape similar to this, just be mindful of which shin is in front so that when we come back afterwards, you can place the other shin in front. And if there's any shake, just breathe through the shake. And take 11 deep breaths. You've got this. And after your next exhale, begin to come back up and slide your chair out of the way. Extend your legs out front, move your blocks, bolsters, books, whatever you've been using, cushions. And make sure you have sufficient space on the right side and the left side of your mat and come down to your back. On Thursday mornings, I teach a gentle hatha practice on Zoom, for now on Zoom. And during this class, I this is one of the practices that we do. It's from the Pala Muktasana series, comes from the Satyananda lineage. And it's a really mindful, slow practice to help enough Sorry, help open up all the joints in the body. Go ahead and extend your legs. And you, let's just take a couple breaths here. And I'm going to do a shortened version of this because this is, I'm intending these videos only to be half an hour long. I've gone long a couple of days recently. Bend the sole, bend the left knee, place the sole of the left foot on the mat. And then inhale the right leg off the floor. Energize that leg and come either to a pointed foot, which means like a high heel shoe or a pointed foot. You could use a dorsiflex foot, like with the heel pointing away. Just make sure you've got some uh, activity in the leg and begin clockwise circles with breath, inhaling and exhaling with each rotation, externally rotating, just checking my space. And if you have the mobility 
If you have the space, you can increase the size of the circle. Inhale and exhale. And if it's if you've gone too far, come back to a smaller circle. Inhale and exhale. Take your mind's eye right into the ball and socket of the hip and breathe. Inhale and exhale with each rotation. And you can alternate the shape of the foot. Let's go one more breath, big breath in, big breath out. And then just reduce the size of the circle and take a breath in and release, exhale. Extend your left leg and feel. Bend your right knee, place the sole of the right foot on the mat. <clears throat> Some of you may prefer to put your hands underneath your seat. Extend your left leg, raise it off the floor with an inhale breath and externally rotate. That means go counterclockwise this time. Inhale and exhale. Start small and just check in with your breath. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And if there's clunking or clicks, and it feels like it's too much, just reduce the size of the circle. Amplify your breath. I don't know if I finished my thought about the Thursday morning classes. They're at 10 o'clock on Zoom. The link is below in the description box. It says more offerings by Sadhana. Mm. Make sure the leg feels engaged. Choose your shape of foot and take a couple more circles. Inhale and exhale. And then reduce the size of the circle. Take a big breath in and release with an exhale breath. Extend both legs. And integrate for a breath or two. And then we will do internal rotation. So you may choose to bend the left knee and bring the sole of the foot to the floor, or you could have the leg straight if that feels comfortable in your low back. Either way works. Fingers can be up or down or underneath your seat. Open is a nice receptive gesture. And then inhale the right leg off the floor, engage the leg, and then be given Cap, sorry, begin counterclockwise circles, inhaling and exhaling with each rotation. Remember to breathe. Reduce the size of the circle and release the leg. Left leg. Inhale the left leg off the floor and begin clockwise circles. Inhale and exhale. Your length of breath will determine the speed of the rotation. Close your eyes and take your internal focus inside the ball and socket of the hip.
Do two more. And then reduce the size of the circle. Take a breath in and a breath out. Bend the knees, soles of the feet to the mat. Turn to a side and come back up to your seat. I always have a hard time with my hair clip. I take out my hair <coughs> and then I can never find the clip on the carpet. Here we go. So try to remember <coughs> which of your shins was in front. For me, it was the left shin in front. So I'm going to place the right shin in front this time. And so perhaps you're in more of a cross-legged shape. Perhaps you're moving towards the fire log pose. Perhaps you're halfway in between. Bring your chair back. And I'm, I have my hands on my knees. I'm just trying to tighten up my posture a little bit. And see how my seat is below my, or below my knees? My seat is below my knees. My seat. I'm going to rise up. Encourage the knees to soften down. I'm going to support here with the block. And here with the block. Pull in the chair. And then when you feel ready, you can come into a forward fold. And I could probably have one more of those small blocks underneath my seat. And at the same time, I feel like something's ready to move. So I'm going to stay exactly where I am and just breathe. And if this is quite intense, amplify your breath. Allow a few exhales to go out through the mouth. And do your best to stay. Slow down the breath. And take your mind's eye now back into the hips. Where the mind goes, the medicine, the prana will follow. Intend freedom. 
Freedom. Why do we want freedom here? We want freedom here so we can begin to release some of the energetic trauma that gets stored physically in this part of the body, emotionally stored here as well too. Take a couple more really deep breaths and do your best to let go and soften. And then very slowly, mindfully rise up. Add your knees up. Extend your legs. And come down onto your backs into Shavasana. Cover yourself up with a blanket and give your body a little wiggle side to side. Allow the whole body to rest down into Shavasana. I invite you to stay in Shavasana for as long as you are able, completely resting on your back on the floor. And I will offer a mantra of healing before we go. Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandim Pushtivaranam Urvarukamiva Bandanam Richo Mukshiyamam Ritat Namaste. The light within me acknowledges and sees the light within you. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. See you tomorrow.